You can advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com? The roof of Broadcasting Building. Speaking from the roof of Broadcasting Building, New York City. The bells you hear are ringing to warn the people to evacuate the city as Martians approach. Estimated in the last two hours, three million people have moved out along the roads to the north. Hutchison River Parkway is still kept open for motor traffic. Avoid bridges to Long Island. Hope- Coming to you from some far point station, like a cosmic tumbleweed, both north and south of the Pleiades, here's your host... Gary Anderson. And I am back with our guest, Jeff. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the Battle of L.A. And then we're going to talk about UFOs and MUFON and whatever. We have them here to 830 Pacific West Coast time. Hey, Jeff, we are back. Hey. Could you imagine? Hello. Though, can you- I, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Everything's cutting out for me on my end, so. I apologize. You know, I, I can say this. You know what? You you said it so perfectly. What goes up comes down. All that strat note comes down. You know, like these idiots that go out and discharge their guns on the 4th of July and shoot it straight up in the sky, and then occasionally one of them will get nailed because the bullet comes down. And when it comes down, it's going to come down as fast as it went up. Right, and uh, <laughs> it's it's not a very comfortable time uh, around the Fourth of July. Uh, <laughs> this is a, where I live now. There's a lot of people that it's kind of a semi-rural area, and there's still a lot of people that uh, do that. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the same where I I'm, worry. The same way where I'm at. I had to go one time and explain a couple years back. I. Had a neighbor, he had a M16, not fully automatic, semi-automatic. And he was sitting there, you know, actually it was my next door neighbor that moved out and somebody else moved in. But he was pointing straight up and he was going bang, 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 bang. And I went over there the next day and I said, do you realize those come up, go up and they come down? You could have killed you, your wife, yeah. children or me or my family. People yeah, don't realize that's, that. That's just totally irresponsible. Not responsible gun ownership there, Gary. Oh, no. Could you imagine, though, after <laughs> this Battle of L.A., where they 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 sent off all this anti-aircraft, you know, shells out there, trying to hit what they thought was, well, something. How, how, well, they, how long were the people shook up after that? My dad um, was so shook up by it that to his death, he refused to discuss the subject with me. Um, Even, you know, when I had good photos from the L.A. Times uh, showing the convergence of the air raid lights on whatever the object was and uh, some witness testimony, my mom said, uh, please, that he was still so shook up by the event that he would not want to talk about it at all. So don't even broach the subject with them. And I honored that. Um, I, I never talked about it with him, although, you know, I would have liked to. But I did understand the fact that, you know, sometimes events like that can have a, a serious effect on some people. And that's totally understandable. But some witnesses, you know, you have to understand these were trained artillery anti-aircraft professionals firing at whatever this object was. Now, I can't say I know what it was, but what I can say is that I know what it was able to accomplish. And it was able to take control of that area of the sky uh, with complete sovereignty Whatever we had, our best we had, we threw at it for over an hour to no effect whatsoever. And then it just sauntered away. Oh, wow. So, you know, that right there is is incredible. 
that fact right there, without describing anything else to it other than that characteristic right there, I think is pretty fascinating enough. Uh, some people say that, you know, the United States government probably wasn't prepared for UFOs or anything like that at the time. And I have to strongly disagree because as far as I'm aware, on April 12th of the preceding year, 1941, there was a crash in Cape Girardeau that the Army seemed to handle fairly well. And uh, which leads me to think that possibly even that one might not have been the first. But if it was the first, they learned a lot of lessons from it that they used later on in the way that they handled uh, disc retrievals or the subject with the public. So, yeah, um, very interesting time there in, during the war. Of course, you know, loose lips sink ships was the rule of the day. So we may never hear a lot of the truly fascinating things that happened in that time period, especially around any areas of any significant defense significance. Oh, you're so right. But uh, the one stories that do come out are, you know, I have to give them a lot of credit because the people that are telling them were either military personnel or law enforcement professionals or people of that caliber that had, you know, firsthand information of what was going on with the subject at the time. And I find them to be, you know, some of the best purveyors of information regarding these incidents. Oh, yeah, you're so right. I do want to say this. Uh, James, my news uh, director for the show, sent me this over about the Battle of L.A. It did, in fact, claim six lives. Three civilians were killed directly by friendly fire, while three others suffered heart attacks. During the hour-long surge... Three heart attacks, yeah. yeah, uh, During the hour-long surge, there was numerous damage done to buildings and, you know, businesses by our own anti-aircraft guns. Yeah, there were plenty of pictures published of of things that happened. I'm sure they couldn't, they didn't get to all of them because, of course, they didn't have the Internet back then. They only had so many reporters. But even just the next day, the, the number of incidents that they had in the paper that they were able to cover was really phenomenal. And some of the pictures you look at and you wonder, you know, geez, why weren't there more people that were actually killed by this? Because, you know, <laughs> some of the holes of the things that came down were really large. And if it had hit a child or something, you know, it could have been all she wrote. Yeah, what child? But you Exactly. Know, you know, yeah. you're so right, too, because you know what? I think there was a, you know, going back... You know, before the war, during the war, there were so many sightings, supposedly, of UFOs and crashes of UFOs. And I, I think they were better at covering it up because, one, we didn't have the Internet, right? And, two, the government had more control of the news media than they do now because of a lot of reasons. Oh, sure. Yeah, so if the, they sit there and they did a blackout on it, you know, the news isn't going to report it. And the other thing is, it, it, it's scary. The big flop was Roswell when they had announced, hey, we shot a UFO down and then changed the story. That's when people started realizing something's going on and we're being lied to. But I got a feel, feeling there's been a lot going, you know, all the way from World War II. I've talked to people in the past that, you know, flew bombers, B-17s and stuff, and they claimed that they saw UFOs. And they weren't the, 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 the German jets, you know, the Foo Fighters. They were the actual sure. UFOs. Disc. Well, you know, actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mix up the German jets, the Messerschmitts with Foo Fighters. Um, to my knowledge, what we call the Foo Fighters were balls of light or, right. you know, green sphere-like objects that, to my knowledge, we still don't know to this day what they were. Um, and they could very well be tied into uh, discs or other type of technology. Uh, my feeling is, you know, they're probably more tied into uh, the extraterrestrial type origin uh, 
craft than anything man-made for sure. Um, because we still hear stories of things with characteristics like that. And quite frankly, we still don't know what the hell they are. Well, maybe they were watching our entertainment of the war battles and, and looking at, gee, these people are primitive, primitive, whatever. <clears throat> well, it does seem that, uh, you know, ever since hostility started, the number of sightings picked up. And definitely since we became a nuclear technology, the number of sightings set up, uh, you know, astronomically, there were untold numerous count, accounts of uh, craft being seen over the different labs that were working on different components of the Manhattan Project, and even accounts of them being seen at the Trinity test site. So, yeah, they've taken an interest, I believe, in uh, our nuclear ambition. Um, I, I know, I personally know uh, Colonel Robert Salas, and, and Bob and I have talked about what happened when his whole flight of missiles was shut down by a UFO hovering over the flight line there at uh, Malmstrom Air Force Base. Uh, so, yeah, you know, they've, they've obviously toyed with us and, and let us know that uh, they can control uh, quantities of our missiles either by shutting them down or in the case of the flights of missiles in Russia, activating them into alert status and only stopping it at the last second before they actually launched. Uh, so, yeah, I, I believe they've sent very serious messages uh, to the people in, in charge. <laughs> Whether they've listened to the messages or not uh, remains to be seen. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I, I believe that they don't approve of us dabbling with nuclear weapons in, in any way or form. And they may not even be too keen on us using uh, nuclear power. Uh, I'm, I'm, although, I, from what I gather, any interactions with them over nuclear pants has purely been them siphoning energy off, not doing anything that would drastically hurt the plant. But then, who knows, maybe uh, all the truth hasn't been told about interactions with nuclear power plants. Probably not. I will say this story. You know, remember Republic Airlines years ago? They were a major airline. I remember the company, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah Republic Airlines. Uh, so many air companies have died that, you know, it's hard to keep track of all of them that are gone now. Yeah, they were a big company, but a friend of mine was a vice president of one of the divisions of Republic Airlines. During Vietnam, he was a colonel. He flew a B-52 from Guam over North Korea, did his job, and flew back. I got to know the guy real well. And one day, he was sitting there telling me, you know, because we were sharing war stories. Mine was ground. His was in the air. He said one day, coming back, after he dropped what he called the eggs, heading back to Guam, he saw a UFO off the wing. His co-pilot saw it. His radio operator saw it. The gunner saw it. And everybody on the craft end up seeing it. He said the biggest ma mistake he made was getting on the horn, as he said, and announcing that there was an unidentified UFO off his wing. He was instructed when he, to, when he landed, nobody come out of the plane. And when he landed... He did what he was told. All these military jeeps came and surrounded the aircraft. They were taken into a building, and each member, he said, was taken in a separate room. Guys in suits were talking to him, and he had to sign a disclosure that he would never divulge what he'd seen. He knew at that point, he told me, his military uh, career was over with. 